In the final chapters of the Carboniferous, when towering lycopsids ruled the wetlands, a quiet revolution began. A group of plants emerged that looked like ferns but carried a secret weapon, seeds. These were the pteridasperms, or seed ferns, and they didn't need constant water to reproduce. That made them uniquely suited for a changing world, as Earth's climate shifted in the Permian, growing drier, more seasonal, and less forgiving, the old spore-based plants began to disappear. But seed ferns thrived, especially in the vast southern supercontinent of Gondwana. There, one genus rose to dominance, Glossopteris, with its broad, tongue-shaped leaves and strong root systems, Glossopteris spread across vast southern landscapes. It thrived from what is now India to South America, from Africa to Antarctica regions that today lie separated by oceans. But back then, they were all part of a single landmass, Gondwana. The identical fossils of Glossopteris found on these distant continents became one of the first clues that Earth's continents had once been joined together, Glossopteris wasn't a conifer. It didn't form cones or woody trunks. Its seeds grew on modified leaves, not in cones, and its structure was somewhere between fern and gymnosperm. That's why seed ferns are often seen as evolutionary bridges, plants that link the ancient swamp forests to the seed-bearing flora of later eras, but like so many Permian organisms Glossopteris didn't survive the mass extinction that ended the Permian. But for tens of millions of years, it reshaped Earth's southern landscapes. In a world where survival demanded change, it showed what a single idea, a seed, could do. It wasn't just a new way to grow, it was a new way to endure.